what is Offering Tree. Um, I'll just say a few words about that, and then Eddie, if you want to jump in uh, after I've kind of done this brief introduction, please feel free. So we've helped hundreds of teachers uh, build their online presence. And a little bit about our background, um, it actually came out of our own struggles uh, in working to try to develop uh, an online presence. So I used to work as a manager at a yoga studio. And as I mentioned, I also teach uh, a lot of meditation and mindfulness around the country. And I was struggling uh, to try to figure out how to create my online presence and how to manage it because I hadn't been trained in that. Uh, I had been trained how to teach. Um, you know, I had been trained how to run a studio uh, and to support students, but I didn't have any knowledge about how to build a website or how to take online payments or how to uh, offer uh, classes online and stream them, uh, you know, via video conference. So uh, I uh, got together with um, Eddie and um, Arvid and Alec, who were the other co-founders, and we started Offering Tree as a benefit corporation with that express purpose of really furthering uh, access to wellness um, and also providing wellness education. And what we're finding ourselves doing now these days is helping a lot of teachers shift to online teaching, given everything that's happening right now with uh, COVID-19. And I know we're all getting bombarded with endless emails with the subject line saying COVID-19. Uh, and so there's, you know, it can feel kind of overwhelming. I know myself, I've at times definitely felt overwhelmed by all the kind of disorientation and uncertainty that we're collectively facing right now. So we made a big push uh, recently at Offering Tree to really support and to provide resources. We've written some blog posts. We're creating uh, videos. We're also creating an ebook. Uh, and we're really trying to get information out there about how uh, teachers can shift from, you know, traditional in-person classes or workshops or even one-on-one uh, -on -one appointments to shift those entirely online and to do that very seamlessly. So that's uh, a kind of a big topic that we'll be covering uh, in today's uh, webinar. I want to just highlight the key features of Offering Tree. So if you take nothing else away from this webinar, these are the, the three things I want you to take away. Offering Tree can help you with online teaching. And so what this means is that the platform is designed so that you can get set up and running within 10 minutes. And within 10 minutes, you should be able to accept uh, client registrations. You should be able to uh, offer uh, entirely online events. And uh, you should be able to connect and message your students. And so this is uh, really one of the key features uh, of the platform. We designed it so that you didn't need technical skills. We wanted to make it as simple and easy to use as possible. And we wanted it to be very uh, fast and efficient so that you wouldn't have to spend hours learning how to code or learning how to, uh, you know, get a plugin to work with your site. So the other key feature uh, is client communication. So not just online teaching, but client communication is the second key feature that we have. And this includes everything from newsletters to event messaging to email marketing. And we'll show you some of that today uh, on this webinar, just like we'll show you the online teaching so that you can see how that works within the platform and, and what that can do for you. The final area uh, that really is a key feature of uh, the Offering Tree platform is organization and ease. So as I mentioned, we really built this from the ground up to be as uh, easy to use uh, as possible and so that you didn't require uh, you know, having all of these uh, tech skills. And what that means is that scheduling, registration, payment, there's even a dashboard that will show you. All of that is built in and it all works together out of the box. So you don't have to worry about trying to stitch together eight or nine different platforms to make them kind of uh, work together nicely. This just works. And that was one of the, uh, the primary goals that we had for the platform. Uh, Eddie, anything else you'd like to add uh, before I move off this slide? Uh, no, I think that's a good, a good representation. Okay, thanks. So um, let's go ahead and dive in. We'll start by showing you how to create a site from scratch, and then we'll follow up with how to create online events, and finally end with a demo of how to accept payments for online events that you might be offering. I'm going to quickly walk through how to create a website using Offering Tree's website creation tools. As you can see, our template website has a header, a feature graphic, a tagline, and an about section. 
let's start creating our site. First, let's customize some of the site colors. Let's change the header background to something a little lighter. And let's change that header text color to something that doesn't quite pop out as much. Let's pick like a slightly gray value. That looks pretty good. And for the bottom about section, let's pick a little bit lighter background color. We'll pick something similar to our header text color. Um, and for our accent color, let's get something else here. That looks pretty nice, but maybe it's a little too light. We want something that will pop up a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. And maybe that's even a little bit better. Pops a little bit more. Um, so now the colors are looking pretty good. Uh, let's update some... Well, let's try updating the fonts. Um, maybe something a little thinner would look nice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe we'll change the body font to the same. That's looking pretty nice. Now we can start updating the content. This is where we'll put our brand name. Uh, let's do something like Katie's Yoga. And we can update our feature, our logo. Um, this would be a good spot for either a picture of you or a picture of your logo. Um, with our upload tools you can do some cropping and we can change the feature graphic. We have uh, stock photos that you can pick from here. You can also crop your stock photos. Then there's an option to either show the entire image or have it scroll as the user scrolls. Um, Let's just stick with the default scroll behavior. That looks pretty good. Now we'll put something in for our tagline. This is just a sh little short snippet to give people an idea of what you're all about, what you're offering. An intention grabbing headline here. We'll just put something in for demonstration purposes. Add a little disclaimer here, as this is just a demonstration site and not actually real. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's add a little bit of text, giving a little bit longer form answer about you know what who we are and uh, what we're what we're all about here. Um, so I'll just paste something in that I have off of another one of our demo sites to make this go a little bit faster. But in this section, you can do a few more things. You can add links, bold text, add, head, add, add different headers, um, format the text a little bit more. Uh, we'll just add a link here as kind of an example of what you can do. Um, once you create your site, you'll also be able to add embed videos to this section and do a few more things. Um, but in the interest of time, we'll just kind of move on here. The site looks pretty good. And now the next step is just to create our account. So this is pretty basic stuff. Um, first name, last name, email address, password. Um, fill that in here. Just use a test email address kind of with a pretty generic password. And, and this is an area here where we can customize our URL. So we can either have offering tree in it, Katie, our website would be katiedemo at offeringtree.com, or we can have a custom domain, like it would just be katiedemo.com. But we'll stick with the katiedemosite.offeringtree.com for now. We'll put in a profile image. Um, this is your personal profile image could be different from your site logo. And we're done here. Let's create our account, create our website. And now we're done. Uh, we've created our site. We have a little help pop-up modal that pops up um, and with a little video, a little how-to video on how you can get started. 
And um, that's about it. So in about five minutes, we've created our site, uh, albeit we know we've had um, content already created for us, which made it easy. I know the creating the content is usually the hardest part of this thing, but um, technically it's pretty easy to do from a, from a tech standpoint. So if you're not tech savvy, um, you shouldn't be too intimidated by this, hopefully. And we're always here to help you at support at offeringtree.com. Welcome. In this video, we'll cover how to put your offerings online with Offering Tree. You can teach your classes, appointments, and workshops remotely using Zoom, Google Hangouts, or YouTube Live. To get started, we'll go to the upper right corner of our site and click on the Manage Your Site button, and that'll take us to our dashboard. You can also sign out from here. When we get to our dashboard, we'll see the pulse of our site. We'll see our, the number of visitors, page views, payments, etc. But to get started creating offerings, we'll go to the Manage Schedule section and click on Offerings. If this is the first time you've been here, you'll see a help video pop up that will explain how to create and schedule offerings. Uh, we also have links to our blog posts that help as well on the bottom of the page. And you can always access the video again by clicking Learn More. But we'll click the Create Offering button to get started. Let's create a restorative yoga offering. I'm going to pull in some text from one of our clients, one of our offering tree sites, Bliss House Yoga. And uh, I'm going to create a hyperlink to their website so you all can visit it and see what another real life offering tree site looks like. In the offering description, you can also format text, title, header, bold, italic, underline, um, but we'll just add a hyperlink right now. So let me add the link to the site, blisshouseyoga.com. You can see now it's a link. You can also embed videos, pictures, sound files, etc. We won't bother with that right now. You can also enable appointments for an offering. Um, you can put in a suggested price or donation. Uh, you can accept you can accept you can accept online payments for your offerings. Um, let's change our image to something more representative of restorative yoga. Crop this correctly, and we'll go ahead and create this offering. Now we'll go ahead and schedule this offering. And we get taken to our schedule page. Again, if you haven't scheduled anything, you'll see a pop-up video that'll help you get started. Um, but we'll add this for Friday. Schedule this for Friday. Now you have the option of scheduling an offering or scheduling a series. Uh, and not, schedule an offering is just a one-off class or event, um, but a series will be if they register for the series, they'll get access to all the events within the series. Uh, we'll just schedule an offering. We'll pick a restorative yoga offering. Let's start this at 5.30 p.m. and it'll end, it'll end at 6.45 p.m. There's other options here when you're scheduling an offering. You can put in uh, an address if it's at a specific location, or you can have it repeat. We'll have it repeat every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, you can also add in a default price and a maximum occupancy. Um, but we'll set up our online information now. So in the online link URL, you want to put in the video conferencing link that you're going to use to offer your offering online. Uh, this could be Zoom. Google Hangouts, YouTube Live, or any other link um, that where you can join uh, online. So for this, we'll just put in Zoom's homepage, even though it's not a, a meeting link. This is just for illustration purposes. And we'll put in our link name. We'll make it descriptive, so join the Zoom meeting. Uh, the public link checkbox is if you want this uh, link to be accessible to everybody, but we'll leave it private, which means that it will only be available to people who register. 
Um, you can have the option to require a waiver when they register. Um, we have some default waiver text for you, uh, but you can put in your own waiver as well. And you can accept online payments, so require people to pay um, when they register. Um, this is a great option for people, and uh, we have links on how to do that here. So we'll go ahead and we'll create this offering, the scheduling. So now you can see it's scheduled for Friday and next Monday and the following Wednesday and Friday. If we go to our home page, we can see now it has popped up in the upcoming events section. And so when clients come to our home page, now they can see our scheduled offerings. If we go to the schedule page, you can see it listed here. Um, we can look at upcoming events and see all of them. Uh, if we click on the event anywhere, we'll see the detail page pop up with all of our information that we put in our offering, as well as share buttons and online uh, join text. Um, but let's register for this. So I'll register as if I'm a student registering for this class. I'll use a test email address. Now I'm registered, I get a little confirmation pop up that tells me when my registration is and to check my, check my spam folder if need be. And uh, we, if we check our email, we see the student will get an email saying, hey, thanks for signing up. It's got good information in here. It's got the Zoom meeting link we put in with that descriptive text. Um, it's got uh, a, an iCal attachment so we can easily add this to our calendar. And it, it also has uh, this view more button that'll take us to the, the detail page back on our homepage. So that's just a quick overview on how to set up appointment events um, online. And now if we want to create appointments online, we'll go ahead and we'll create another offering. Now we'll pick yoga again as a category. Let's do private yoga sessions. Um, this is will be one-on-one -on -one private yoga sessions that we want to be appointment based so uh, clients can go on and book what time works for them when we're available. So we'll put in another offering description here. One on one yoga sessions. These are appointments offered online. Uh, here's our appointment information section. So we're going to want to enable appointments for this offering. So the first time we enable appointments, it's going to ask us what our availability is. Um, we can watch this video to get a lot more information, but we'll just pick one word generally available for appointments. So we'll just say Monday, Wednesday, Friday again, we're available, 9 to 5. Um, we'll put in the price for our appointment here, $75. Uh, the duration the appointment lasts, um, let's make this an hour and 15 minutes. And any setup time or cleanup time that you may need before or after the appointment before you're ready to take another one. And this ad minimum advanced and maximum advanced notice is how long do I need before I get a booking. So let's say I don't want any bookings within a day to give me time to get ready. Um, but we'll offer this online just as we did last time. So we'll just put in the Zoom homepage link just for illustration purposes and make a nice descriptive link name. Now you have the same options as with uh, events. Let's go ahead and click done there. We won't bother with uh, changing the image this time. Let's create our offering. Okay, no need to schedule this one as it's appointment based. So now if we go to our home page um, and we click on our offerings page, uh, we'll see a book now button under our private yoga session. So if, when your clients come here and they hit the book now, um, they'll be taken to a, a appointment booking page. Um, you can see it's currently Wednesday, but since we didn't want to take any appointments in the same day, um, Friday, uh, Monday or Wednesday we have availability. So let's try to schedule something for next Wednesday at 1.30. So I'll put in my information as someone looking to book your services. Put in a test email address here. And same thing, uh, once we register, we'll get an email with uh, the, the link to join the, the offering. 
And if you would have accepted online payments, we would have had to pay um, to get that registration. And now you can see there's a book appointment button in your upcoming events section to let people know that you offer appointments. So I hope this video helps you bring your offerings, your events, your workshops, and your appointments online. So um, let me uh, go back to the presentation and I'll just, um, I'll kind of go to uh, client communications. So I just want to say a little bit about that. So we you saw the video from Eddie that showed the online teaching. And now I want to talk a little bit about client communication. So for that, I'm going to go back to uh, one of these sites. I'm just going to use our sample site. So this is uh, Katie sample, which is just our sample site. And um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and go into the back end of this site. And you'll see that, uh, you know, I've had this number of visitors, this many page views, uh, this amount of payment was recently received, and the number of clients that I have that have registered for events. I can also see just at a glance uh, how many people have signed up for my events. So this is a sort of dashboard section uh, of your site. And so you can see all of this because you've logged in as a teacher and this allows you to um, see all the detail. But what I want to highlight right now is this communications uh, section. So if you see that on my screen right there, um, I can actually go to uh, email marketing. And uh, the first thing that you'll see that pops up is newsletter. So I can create newsletters that I can schedule to go out at a future date or have them scheduled to go out right now if I want. And I can choose those newsletters to go out to everybody that's uh, ever taken a class uh, with me or that's joined my newsletter, or I can choose just a certain sub-segment of that. And um, the really neat thing about uh, these newsletters is that you'll see uh, this, these little icons over here. And once it's sent, so it tells me that it's sent right here, there's this little stats um, symbol. If I click on that, I can actually get details. So it'll show me the text of the newsletter that went out. It'll also show me that uh, 17 people, it was sent to 17 people, it was delivered, um, and 17 people opened it. Now, if I wanted to drill down and actually look at that detail on an individual uh, basis to see which of my students were actually engaging with the newsletter, I could click on this recipients tab. And you'll see here, these are all just, um, you know, fake uh, accounts, but you'll see that uh, it shows me that it was sent, that it was delivered, and that it was opened by this student. And if it wasn't opened, you'd see a little red X right there. Um, and so it gives you a nice uh, way to look at the engagement uh, from your students. So that's one of this, uh, the key features uh, under this uh, communications section. The other one that I wanted to show you is uh, automated emails. So this is really nice because what it allows you to do is set up automatic email so that if somebody joins uh, your newsletter uh, and wants to learn about what you have to offer, the system will immediately email out uh, one of these automatic emails. So if you look at this one, it'll, it tells me that this will go out one day after somebody has signed up uh, to receive you know, my newsletters or my communications. And then I can actually layer these so I can add another one and this one will go out two days later. So the first one, I might say I want to send a welcome email. I might have some attachments that I might want to include. And then on day two, I want to follow up with, a, hey, I thought I'd follow up and send you some getting started tips. And I can look at that by just clicking on this little edit icon. And you'll see uh, the text uh, that pops up here. So just a real simple welcome message uh, to everybody that's um, signing up for my newsletter. And uh, if I then go back, I can do that. I can go back and look at what goes out on day two. So if I edit that one, you'll see this is where I'm sending uh, a few resources to help you get started. And then just adding some links that I think, uh, you know, the student might be really interested in. And again, this just goes out automatically. So I can set it and forget it because it'll go to that student two days after they signed up for the newsletter. Um, and you'll see also at the bottom that you can include attachments. So if you have you know, files or PDFs or things that you want a student to be able to reference. Maybe it's a, a sheet of, you know, different poses or you can actually include that as an attachment down here and it'll go out as part of this automatic email. So let me just uh, show you one last thing. Um, so this is kind of just the overview of communications and then we'll leave probably about the last 15 minutes for um, Q&A. So this is just an example of a, um, 
uh, accepting online payments. I just want to show you what this looks like. It's only two minutes, so we will be done uh, in two minutes. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's take a look at how online payments work from the perspective of a student. In this case, I'll go ahead and register for one of the donation-based online offerings. You can see the registration button here. Once I click that, I'll get the pop-up to enter my name as a student. Next, enter my email. Enter a donation amount. In this case, I'll donate $5. And you'll see that as soon as I enter an amount, a credit card field pops up here below. You also see that there are fees associated with credit card processing. So in this case, this event was set up to pass the fees along to the student. You can also set them so that you absorb the fees as a teacher, in which case the fees would not be passed along to the student. But since I set them up to pass along to the student for this event, you'll see that the total is now $5.70. I'll now go ahead and enter my credit card information, enter the expiration date, enter the CVV code on the back of the card, and then finally a postal code. Now I can go ahead and register. And you'll see that I get a confirmation window saying you registered for restorative yoga and then says for me to please check my email. Now you'll see that when I go into the back end of my site as the teacher and I go down to the client payment section, you'll see that there is a new payment that was made, $5. So it shows up immediately. It tells me who uh, the student was that registered. I can also manage this payment very simply by clicking on the manage button. And you'll see I get a number of options. I could refund and cancel. I could just refund or I could never mind and just leave it as it is. So Offering Tree allows these very robust payment features so that you can easily accept payment for any of your online offerings, whether they're workshops, they're one-on-one -on -one appointments, and it's all handled uh, very seamlessly here in the back end. Additionally, the student will automatically be emailed a receipt, and you will also be emailed letting you know that someone's registered and paid for one of your events. So we hope that this feature makes it very easy for you to accept online payments for everything that you have to offer. Great, so that, again, just to show you that, and I think what I'd like to do um, is kind of at this point, go over to the Q&A and uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Uh, so give me just uh, one second here. I'm gonna get back to the PowerPoint and then I'm gonna skip ahead to the live questions.